Today we're going to be making the classic arcade game Asteroids in Scratch. The first thing to do is to create the background for the game. And we're going to use a black paint bucket to fill in the screen with black. Then after that we switch the color over to white so that we can draw some stars. And now that the background is sorted, time to create the player. I'm going to start off on my first iteration by uh, trying to make the player uh, very thin. As you can see, I'm zoomed in over here, and I have this box that I'm making quite tiny. And the reasoning that I have over here is that I want the player to be similar size to the arcade game, but it's too small. So in my next try over here, I'm making the player much bigger and it's uh, easier to see. And we can use this at least for uh, testing purposes so it's uh, easier to see the effects of what we're doing. And now I'm going to be adding in my code for how the player moves. I'm going to be making custom block over here to make a small module, uh, something to organize the code for my player movement. I add in some buttons over here to sense if uh, different keys are being pressed. Uh, I'm going to be using the left and right arrow keys at first. And when you press the left arrow key, the player will rotate counterclockwise. And when you press the right arrow key, the player will rotate clockwise. Testing it out, and it looks like it works. Then real quickly before I continue on with this is I'm going to make a variable called acceleration. This decides how fast the player goes when you press the button. Then I'm uh, going back into the direction turning and I'm adding in some extra keys over here so that you can turn using either uh, the arrow keys or WASD. Now that that's finished, time to mess around with my acceleration. So when I want my ship to be moving, uh, I don't want it to start off moving, so I'm going to initialize my variable by uh, when I start the game, the acceleration is going to be zero. Then when I press the space key or the up arrow, I want the ship to accelerate. So I'm going to change the acceleration by one or by five. The next thing I have to do is make sure that the ship can slow down by itself. So instead of my forever loop over here, I'm going to always change the acceleration by negative 5. Then of course I don't need the ship to go backwards, so I'm going to stop the ship from decelerating when it reaches 0. The last part of this is to make sure that the ship is going to move forwards according to this acceleration. Now time to test it out. And we move, but we move sideways. I can't control my ship. I don't know what's happening over here. Let me take a peek at the code. Okay, so my first thought over here is that maybe I'm started off pointing in the wrong direction. So when I start off, I'm gonna make sure that my guy knows that he's pointing up. And of course, I forgot to set up my initial location. Let's go ahead and start me off in the middle of the page at zero, zero. Okay, here we go. And now I'm still going sideways, but I'm pointed in another direction. I think I should have seen it over here, but it took me a little while longer to figure out what was the problem. As you can see over here, I have my player character oriented in the up direction, but maybe 
this uh, scratch doesn't think that up is uh, up. So I turned it sideways and we're going to test this out. And there it is. The sweet victory of solving a problem uh, when you couldn't figure out what was going on. Yep, that was pretty good right there. And of course, uh, as I was flying around, maybe the acceleration could be toned down a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit more. And let's test this out. And we can still fly, now it's easier to control, and we can still have some pretty good acceleration if we hold down the acceleration button. Now that flying is taken care of, I'm going to be making a bullet for my ship. Because a spaceship needs ammunition to shoot asteroids. And this simple bar will do for now. And the way this works is that this sprite starts off as a hidden character in the game. And I'm going to try to keep him along with the player. And whenever the player presses space, a uh, bullet's going to pop out. So the first condition for this is that I want the bullet to be pointing <laughs> first in the right direction and next I need the bullet to stay with the player. And in terms of orientation, I'm going to try out first uh, pointing towards the player and see how that goes. Now I'm going to create the movement whenever space is pressed and a clone is created. I'm going to move 10 steps and then I'm going to move until I touch the end of the screen. Pretty simple. And then let's see how this works. When I reach the edge of the screen I should delete. And I shot sideways. Wow. So I need to figure out how to point my player, my bullet in the right direction. And what I'm going to do is, uh, my idea here is I'm going to borrow some of this code from the player. And whenever the player turns, the bullet's going to turn. And they will always stay oriented in the same position. Sorry that this code looks quite messy over here. I'm going to fit in the code for turning whenever the bullet is in existence. So whenever the player turns, the bullet turns, and there you go. It works. And it feels great. I'm going to be playing around with this for quite a little bit. Stay tuned for part two.